Hi, welcome to the Happy Even After podcast. I have such a fun guest here today with me. Her name is Marissa Belletti Lavoie, also known as the Queen of Sass. Marissa is the owner of Sassy Mouth Photography. She's the person photographers go to to learn their craft. She's a magician, a unicorn, and just so damn talented. And I think every photo that I have that's like out there in social media world is one that she took. So I asked her to come today because she is sexy and she owns it and she's not afraid to flaunt it. And I love that because we all need a little bit more of sass in our life. So welcome. Hi, thank you for having me. (laughs) I love you so much, Marissa. And I love like, we're going to share where people can follow you, but everyone really has to because you're photos and your confidence and everything that you do and put out there is just like it's amazing and so often as a woman especially someone who's just gone through a divorce it's it's kind of like the last thing they feel they don't feel sexy they don't feel wanted they don't you know and so how do you where does it come from like what's your secret my sexy (laughs) yes you're just like feeling good and sassy um, well, I do know the power of positivity. So that's something that I, I tap into in my life is just positive energy. I try not to let things get me down too long or too often and keep my spirits up. And that helps me like on the base level. Then I do, I try I keep myself put together. That helps me on the outside. So if I'm looking good. I feel good. I like to experiment with makeup and hair and different styling and that's confidence building and um, taking pictures of myself. I do self portraits because I want to show people that that really can build your, your confidence and make you feel differently about yourself when you see your beauty through somebody else's eyes, even though I'm doing my own pictures. It's just um, to show people that, that it can build your confidence. That, that's that's awesome. And one of the things that you do, and you do extremely well, is boudoir photography. So can you tell us a little bit about what that is and why we all should be having one of these sessions? Yeah, I didn't offer boudoir photography for a couple of years once I started Glam. I really wanted to get comfortable with a woman's face and posing the upper body before I started to pose the whole body because I know the power that boudoir photography has and I wanted to be able to really um, harness it, I guess, and do the best job for my clients. So I started to offer boudoir photography after I trained myself for three years on just taking beautiful pictures of women in their face and portraits of them. And then um, once we started booking boudoir photography, it was actually my first boudoir that I did was full nude. And it was in January and I didn't have much to do, I guess. <laughs> and my client, um, she emailed me and asked if I would do nude portraits. And I said, sure, why not? And she came out of the glam room and it was just like full naked and kind of like <laughs> hit me. And I lost my breath. And then I'm like, okay, I got this. And I just really wanted to photograph my client's body and her beautifulness the as best as I could and that's something I always try to do in my business my business is really based on like seeing the beauty and things and that's I get the biggest opportunity to do that with boudoir because you know women is my business is definitely my client is mostly women and we have the hardest hang-ups about Mm -hmm. everything and we nitpick on everything and boudoir is the it's the most vulnerable you can be with another human being. And then there's like so many of my clients don't even want their pictures taken at all, let alone with no clothes on. So um, I really have to like establish the trust in the, in the booking with them and show them this is a place where they're going to feel beautiful. I'm going to make them look like, see their beauty, show that to everybody and um, every single client that comes for the boudoir experience, they're so nervous when they get here. They just are so nervous. And I always laugh with them and tell them that like nobody ever says that because everybody says that 
And of course you're nervous. You're about to be photographed in little, little bits of clothes or, or nothing at all. <laughs> And sometimes we're strangers. I do, I will do a consult beforehand if people need it, but I send PDF and I send information. So a lot of my clients opt to not come in for the consult beforehand, which I'm fine with because I know what I'm doing. But so they'll come here as strangers and then I have an hour after hair and makeup, they have to get naked for me. <laughs> And it's just, it's just really, there hasn't been a client that's come in for the photo shoot that has like not one has left nervous. Mm. They always leave full of happiness and just like radiating beautifulness. We had a great time together. You know, you've been a client of mine, not boudoir, but a client of mine many times in the way that you leave after the photo shoot, you just feel good inside and with the boudoir, I can see it's, it's kind of like a life changer. It is. Hmm. So that's so interesting because it's more than just a photo shoot. It's really just kind of reclaiming like who you are. And it doesn't have to be for anyone else but yourself, right? It doesn't. A lot of people will write to me. It's for their, their spouse or their, their boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever. But when it comes down to it, everybody knows it's for, it's for you. Hmm. And so how do you help someone become really comfortable with that? Because I know there are people out there saying, I could never do that. Like I, my, you know, my thighs are too big and, and I have cellulite and how, how do you really just become comfortable in your own skin? The photos that I do show in my PDF are relatable, realistic people. So that makes people comfortable right away when they get that information and they see those visuals. If somebody wants to do a boudoir and they're even interested in it at all, it's kind of already in their heart that they're almost willing to take that chance. Mm -hmm. So the, the relatable people in my PDFs, all ages and sizes and everything, that, that helps with the comfort level. And then like any question that they have about their, their I don't want to say problem areas, I know that's used sometimes, but if there is a concern about an area and it's, we'll say it's your belly. Okay. So if you don't want your belly shown, <laughs> then I wouldn't say to bring everything where it will show. I am very good at strategic posing though. Mm. I'm a masterful editor <laughs> and I do brush up some things if I need to, but I'm, I try to pose. I try to dress. I, I use the set. Like I come, it's very, nobody's going to look at their picture and go, oh my God, that's just what I didn't want to have happen. I just make everything nice. And when they come here and show me their pictures and we hang them up on the, on the rack and I look through and I start to plan which set we're going to do each outfit in and, um, like the area of the studio where each outfit is going to be photographed and that starts to add to the comfort of it. If they are getting hair and makeup, then we do have like an hour to chit chat while mm. Crystal is here. That adds to comfort. But even if they're not doing hair and makeup and we're getting right down to it, I, I take as long as I need to, to talk with my, with my client before we get down to business. Cause I'm good at sensing when we've reached the comfort level to get going. And so not everyone it shows up and just kind of strips and it's a complete nude. Like if they can bring clothing with them too, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. People can bring um, glamour options. And if they want to, I can even wrap a dress like around a bra hmm. with, like I do with the balances. So you can do a combo with some glam portraits that you can put in a frame up on the wall and not all nudie pictures I guess <laughs> hang it in your dining room for your family to see for Christmas <laughs> I, I did have a client who ordered a very large canvas for somewhere in her house but <laughs> people hang them up yeah and um and the couple's boudoir too I think is more more hangable up on a wall you know mm, yeah right if it's the two of you right and so why is boudoir like the ultimate empowerment uh, opportunity or, or, you know, move if someone is 
having a transition in their life, maybe just got divorced, maybe just getting out of a relationship. Why is this like something really good to do? It's just the best confidence builder to see yourself in your most beautiful vulnerableness stripped down, looking sexy and gorgeous and feeling it and like the connection with your eyes through the camera and you can always look back and if it is a troublesome time in your life where you are feeling down to be able to know that even if I was in a lower part of my life I still was that that I don't want to say fierce but yeah like that fierce mm. that fierce woman and that even if I felt down it was I still had the power yeah that's so good I love that um, and what advice do you have just about feeling good in your own skin or just bringing some sass back to your life? Because you have <laughs> a ton of that. <laughs> we all need a little bit of your sass. Hmm, let me think of what I do to be sassy daily. <laughs> it's so natural though. I was feeling a little, I was feeling a little less than sassy through quarantine as I'm sure other people were. And I just had to to just say those sort of like mantras to myself in the morning, like you are this, you are this, you are this person. Don't let this get, get you down. Don't let this period of time get you down. Brush your hair, <laughs> put, put on like, I'm a makeup girl. I love makeup, put my makeup on. And I did, I put my makeup on more than I thought I would, I would have ever for not having to do or go anywhere or be anywhere. Cause that was part of how I make myself feel like myself. So like, don't give up on, on, on things that make you feel beautiful. And even if other people are doing it, some people said, you're the only person posting selfies during quarantine. It's like, I'm sorry that I'm the only person posting selfies, but I got up and I did this and mm. I'm proud of it. So I'm going to share it. And more than anything through at the end of it, people like at the campground the other day, somebody drove by and they said, my TikToks made them so happy through quarantine period. It's like, I'm glad I could do that for you. <laughs> so if, if, um, it's, if you're feeling down from a divorce, get yourself together, mm -hmm. do things that make you happy, buy yourself something pretty. <sighs> There's, I do a boudoir photo shoot. It really will like, and, and people do buy new goodies for boudoir photo shoot, whether it be a beautiful dress mm -hmm. or a sexy something or other. And the fact, just doing that, buying something new and, and special for a special occasion, you know, that makes you feel sassy. I, I love that because just the, the act of getting dressed, doing your makeup, and even if you have nowhere to go, even if you are like, it's a Friday night and you're sitting home by yourself, just the act of, of pouring a glass of wine and really feeling good just in your own skin. I mean, it's a, it's really a game changer as to like what you put out there, how you wake up the next day and feel about yourself. I mean, that's such an important point. It's just do those small little things to make you feel better. It's true. I kind of easily... Um... I could have easily become a, a pajama monster. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I might have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there were some days I was a robe monster. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but and it's so easy. Like, at any point in anyone's life, whether it's divorce or something hard that happens, that's the default, is to, like, put on the sweatpants and don't do your hair, don't do your makeup, and just kind of sulk. And yeah, because you want the outward to project what you feel inward, hmm. but if you make the outside, you know, what you want to be, I guess, then it'll, it translates. Right, right. And so how powerful is that, though, is just someone just kind of owning their, just their being proud to be who they are without needing any sort of external influence or support or, or you know, re um, just, just to, to sit in their own sexiness and sassiness. Like I love, I love that. So I have a question for you then, since you are the queen of selfies, um, <laughs> how, do you, how do you take a really good selfie? Okay. You have to face your face hold towards the light. Number one, if the light is behind your head, then you're a backlight scary monster. <laughs> and this will be all dark shadows. 
face your beautiful face towards the light source if it is direct sunlight back away until it is not direct sunlight anymore and the sun is either cut off in front of you or somewhere on your shirt and then crop that out so that you're not seeing the block of sun on your shirt. If you have a white curtain or something to diffuse the sun with, close that and make yourself a big, beautiful soft box. Right now, I am facing my bank of windows in the center of my studio because I don't mess around with light. <laughs> and you want to fill your cracks and your wrinkles and all your junk and all your stuff, unless you were doing that kind of picture. Then mm -hmm. turn your back to the light and show off your cracks and wrinkles and all that <laughs> stuff. But if you would want to, fill it with the light because the light goes in there and a nice, flat, flattering, beautiful light that evens out your face is key for the situation. I will, I mean, I have two windows that go like this in my living room of, of my studio and I stand right, like here's the windows right here. So it just wraps my stuff. Mm. <laughs> Yeah. So, so, you know, that brings up a good point. And if someone had said boudoir is not for me, but maybe I do want some, a new headshot or some really good photos taken. Um, you know, that's something that someone can do as well is to, to, to have a professional take pictures and it, it doesn't have to be pictures without your clothes on, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but just having good pictures after something that maybe is, you know, brought you down is, you know, is always a, a good idea too, right? Definitely. Any sort of not, and, and coming to this, my sassy space is going to be an uplifting experience regardless of the photo shoot. But I'm sure that any, any sort of like headshot experience with any photographer after you're feeling down and to see yourself through somebody else's eyes and to see yourself beautiful is going to be a wonderful experience. So how does someone find a photographer like you? Because you're in Connecticut and um, someone can travel to see you for sure, but there might be someone in California who says I'm not coming to Connecticut. But what types of um, things should someone be looking for in a photographer to have the type of experience that you're talking about? Well, if it's a boudoir photographer, you're going to want to read reviews. It's nice to look through somebody's Instagram, Facebook, see if it's the style that you like, what kind of conversation they're having with their clients and their customers, if the customers are happy about them. If it's a boudoir photographer with 13 followers and some haters, I would say move along. That's not going to work for you. But if I, you just got to get the feel for if it's the right kind of person. I'm definitely not the only photographer that does boudoir in Connecticut, but we all have our unique styles and every state probably has a good variety to choose from. And you got to find what kind of style works for you. When I originally launched boudoir in here, it was really light and bright and and white comforters and I've gotten into my sort of darker groove and working with shadows to hide things we might not want hidden but also shadows to highlight things we do want seen and it's just it's a it's a funner it's a funner way for me to work at the moment and I'm into that so I've been getting more inquiries from people who like that sort of like dark moodiness mm. it's cool you just gotta flip through the internet I would look up your state hashtag your state boudoir photographer follow you know like Connecticut boudoir photographer wherever you are and scroll through and see what you like yeah that's great advice you also do um something that I'm sure not many people do at all is this like steamy shower scene photo <laughs> sessions yeah, what my sassy mouth was um, born from me wanting to use the only part of my studio I had it, and that was the bathroom. So it can be added, a wet session can be added to your boudoir session, or it can be booked separately. So you can come in just for the shower session. And um, it would, I would imagine that it, it seems to the, the peeps who haven't experienced it like the most daring of mm. all the photo shoots that I do, but it's so comforting the warm water, we're like close together in this <laughs> warm little like comforting sack of sassiness and, and the soap is lavender and it smells so good and it ends up being this, this really um, like sensual comforting 
experience. I love doing the wet sessions, but they are hard for me to photograph. It's, it's, I'm scared to take my camera in there all the time, but I do it and I have to like put down plastic and protect the universe. So, um, I, I, they're good though. They're good. They're, I've done couples wet sessions too, and they're scrubbing up dumb at each other. <laughs> so it's so cute in there. <laughs> I mean, but, that, um, that, that would be really hard, right? Like that's, <laughs> that, that, that's like, it takes a really special person who is so comfortable in their own skin to do something like that. Yeah. I get nervous sometimes. And then I just have to tell myself that like, I got this. I'm totally, I'm total, I invented this. So I, you know, like this is my session. This is my photo shoot. This is my everything. So I just have to keep that in mind and direct them and, and it works. So Marissa, I think like the moral of this whole story is to like have a little fun, right? Like not take yeah. ourselves so seriously because we're always so serious. We always have this like to-do list. We're always taking care of other people. And what you're suggesting is we really create some space for self-care. I mean, that's a word that's being used a lot, but really like taking time with ourselves and kind of appreciating it and having a little fun with it and letting go. You're so right on with the self-care. This is a, this has to be the greatest form of self-care mm. is, it's taking time for yourself to, if they just came for the photo shoot alone, I feel like that is enough to change your, change your, uh, your feelings, your mood but then there's photos too after and they're beautiful. Mm. And that's like the, the bonus of the whole thing, just the experience and the self-care that happens. And it's not usual that women take time like this for themselves to do things, things like this for themselves. And they really should, <laughs> they really should. And not for anything, then you have this beautiful photo to like switch out on social media and maybe your ex sees it and is like, what the hell? <laughs> so it's like, I mean, just a little revenge. I mean, that has to feel good too. <laughs> I know the jealousy factor of it is, is pretty good too. And I don't, I don't share people's photos on social media unless they, I don't really ask to share them either from Boudoir, but some of my clients will offer and um, it gets such, a, people love it, you know, and it really, I, it gets such a reaction from women because they are who love it the most and who need it the most. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And that's so great. So how do we, because everyone has to follow you because you're in for a treat following Marissa on <laughs> social media. That's all I have to say. <laughs> How do we find you, follow you, and watch what you're doing? Well, my business is Sassy Mouth. You can find my website is www.sassymouth.net. I'm on the Facebook, Sassy Mouth, and Instagram and Twitter at Sassy Mouth Photo. I have little sidekick um, accounts all over the place for my real weirdos, but those are my main channels. All right. And I will put all of that in the show notes so everyone can easily link on that. So thank you so much. And thank you for bringing a little sass into this space. And hopefully we all can take just a little bit of your sass with us into our everyday lives. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You're adorable and I love you. I love you too, hon. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>